I'm not only the only person talking. Um, I've already did my introduction, so we're gonna go directly into the session. So today's session, we're going to just discuss introduction to statistics with mostly will be your study unit one from your um, study guide. Um, you don't require any calculations or calculator, so this one should be um, easy, straightforward to go through. Um, and because we're just going to introduce some of the concepts that you need to know as you develop or as you go through the entire module as well. Um, <clears throat> so the lesson for today, we're going to just do an introduction to statistical methods um, in order for us to understand how to analyze your data. And we're going to also understand some of the characteristics of the data. Um, we are going to look at also some of the uh, types of variables and also the levels of measurements so that you, because in order to, for you to understand statistics, you need to first make sure that you understand the basics of it. These are the building blocks because from here, everything that we talk about today, you need to remember it all the time as you move along. You need to always remember what is the population, what is a, a, um, a statistic. You need to remember what is a qualitative data, what is a categorical data, what is a, um, an ordinal data and all, and all sorts um, as we move along. So we're going to carry those concepts throughout. There will be some activities. I like giving people work to do so that you, it, you learn by doing things so that you always remember how to solve or how to answer your questions as you get them in your assignment. So I've got lots and lots and lots of activities that we're going to do as a group. If time's allowed, you're going to also have your few minutes to answer them and then we come back together as a group and have an engagement um, and discuss around the questions as well. Okay, so where statistics is located, you need to understand that for you to be able to make decisions, there should be a process. And this process usually should be a scientific process so that people cannot um, argue with whatever you are presenting. So in terms of this scientific process, it always begins with asking the research question. And usually that research question is accompanied by assumptions, which are the claims that you are making, which are the hypothesis. As you can see, I'm already, those who are already repeating this module, you will understand where I am going with this. In order for you to answer those hypotheses or to answer the research question that you have and have those hypotheses that you want to test or your assumptions that you want to test, you need to collect information. And once you have collected that information, you cannot just collect it and put it there. You need to analyze it to find insights, to find information that will help you make a decision. And once, the data that you've collected or the information that you got does not answer your hypothesis, you can go back and revisit your assumption and maybe change or adapt your assumption because the information that you have does not support that. And then you start again, you collect, you will go and collect new data that will, and that is a cycle that we go. Where statistics fits in, in all of this, because my, my role at this point is not to get you as well, because hence the sessions are called statistical literacy. This is for me to help you understand what you are studying has an impact on your day-to-day -day job as well, and can help you in your day-to-day -day job. So I want, by the end of this session, I want you to fall in love with statistics. 
and want to continue in this career or want to use it, um, use statistics. So statistics plays a role in so many things in life. So there are key areas of statistics or elements that you need to understand how they fit in together in statistics. The first part is the data management where we collect the data and do that. So there are people who play those roles. For example, I'm a business intelligence data architect at UWC. My role is to do data management, but I also play a role in producing the statistics, in the analyzing of the data, presenting it in tables and chart, in manipulating it into statistical hypotheses, and testing the hypothesis, checking the correlations, and so on, which are inferential statistics. I'm also responsible for presenting that information so that the executive can be able to consume that information and make relevant decisions. So my role plays around all this, but mostly within statistics, we talk about two and three, but you can see that it encompasses multiple areas, which is also data, which is also presentation, because you cannot just do the manipulation of the data and get them into a report and never share the results. You cannot be able to do your statistical analysis without you sourcing the information, the data, understanding the types of data that you have. And all of that also are included in the processes of statistics. So why, what is statistics? Uh, statistics is the science of collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, interpreting data to assist in making more decisions. So you source the data, you enrich the data by putting it in nice graphs and calculating the the mean, the standard deviations, and presenting that in tables and presenting them as in the dashboard format or tables or charts, and then you give it for people to make informed decisions. That is the process of statistics. Why do we study it? Data is everywhere. We know that statistical techniques are used by many, many, many government department, many organizations, hospitals, um, schools, um, companies uh, like banks and insurance, they wouldn't know and understand their clients and what they need to offer them if they don't use the data that they have. So it, if in our day-to-day -day life, we're not also using the data to make decisions about what, how much is gonna cost us in this month, next month, all those. Sometimes you do add up things, you do, do divide things, you subtract things and you calculate the averages, all those things, they help you make a decision that is part of statistics. You use it in your day-to-day -day life as well. Statistics is also a method that helps people, companies, and everybody to make effective decisions. Because those effective decisions, for example, if you work in a uh, insurance company, let's say probably, uh, let's talk about KZN. KZN had the floods and all those things, right? First it was uh, the looting, then the flood happened in KZN. If I was an insurance company, if I didn't know, um, my clients and the areas and all that, I wouldn't have prepared a cover for a, a risk cover for my clients to say, people, when you're building bands, um, you can insure your company for this much so that you can recover the costs after the burning of your business, all those. In order for a company to understand what the risk are and how much to cost the company, they need to collect more information about the type of a business it is, make some calculations. For example, one of the calculations we're going to talk about them is the coefficient of variation, where it looks at the 
uh, variability of or the likelihood of something costing you more money than the other. So they use those kind of calculations to make those effective decisions. We use statistics as well to help us predict the future. For example, those who work in the um, weather um, stations or the company that monitors the weather, they most of the time predict the weather, which are the weather forecasts that we always go and watch. They used uh, some sort of statistical techniques to come to those forecasting, like your time series, or they can use, there are so many other methods. I don't know what they use um, to forecast the weather, but they use those type of statistical techniques to make estimates in terms of whether it's going to rain, whether it's going to be cold or hot, and so on. So it helps in predicting the future. So there are two branches of statistics, and you can stop me if you don't understand. There are two branches of statistics. The first one is a descriptive statistic. A descriptive statistic is a method that you use to describe your data, and you describe your data by means of summarizing it in tables and charts and presenting it in a way that it is more appealing and easier to consume for the users. So with descriptive statistics, it includes also the method of collecting that information from the surveys, from uh, uh, the administrative systems that you have, or CRM systems, which are called uh, customer relation management systems. Most companies have them, or from your operational systems, those who work in the tools, you understand those who are cashiers, that um, the items you put, the barcode you scan through, those are operational systems, or we call them um, CRM systems, where they help capture the operational data that we use and you can do, um, you can summarize that information to understand the, the sales processes, to understand when, when do you sell more, what is the most bought item in the store, um, and so on and so forth. You also analyze that data, you can present it in terms of tables and charts. The second branch of statistic is what we call inferential statistics, which is the method used to determine something about the population from the sample. We're going to talk about what that's, what is a population, what is a sample later on. So with inferential statistics, there are two methods that you can use in inferential statistics, which is the estimation where we estimate uh, and we're going to talk about this when we do the confidence interval. And there is the hypothesis testing. How does this hypothesis testing and the hypothesis that I spoke about? So remember the hypothesis that I spoke about is just the statement that you do, which is the assumption. The hypothesis testing also, it's a process. It has six steps. We're going to learn about it in chapter nine, or I think study unit nine that you are doing. So there is a section purely for hypothesis testing, where we test the claim that you have made and see if we can accept that claim or reject that claim. Um, and inferential statistics is a process of drawing conclusion or making decision about the population based on the sample, and we're going to talk about this just now, shortly. So we introduced the concept of population and sample. So a population is a set of all elements or, or subject that you are interested in studying. So all of them, for example, everybody in South Africa will be a population. That's a population of South Africa. But also, if I'm interested in studying Western Cape, I can define my population as everybody who stays in Western Cape. So Western Cape population, that is my population. So all elements of interest that I am interested in studying become my population. But because the population is too huge and is time consuming, 
for you to go and get information about all this, you are going to create a subset. Hence, we make um, use of this subset to test the claim and make a decision. And that subset is called a sample. And a sample, because it's just a subset, helps us because it's small. We are able to collect the relevant information that we want and analyze it and present the data and use the inferential statistics to infer back. Because once you test that claim, you can infer back that those results. So when we collect information from uh, the population or the sample, when we start calculating and manipulating this and creating the, the calculation where we calculate the mean, the standard deviation, those are what we call the measures. When we create those measures, we are then creating what we call parameters if we create those measures from the population. If they come from a sample, we call them statistics. And statistic is the study of manipulating and summarizing the data for decision making because we're going to use statistics to infer back to the population. So measures coming from a sample are statistics. From a population are parameters. You need to remember those two things. Later on, when we do the analysis of data, then we're going to talk about the parameters and the statistics. What are the differences and how do we calculate them? Because there are two different ways of calculating or they have different formulas to calculate the parameters and to calculate the statistics. So now, I spoke about you collect data. Now, because we use this interchangeably, data variable, I'm going to tell you that instead of using data, because data are units, we're going to talk about variables. So when we collect variables or inform or data or variables, because the data that we are collecting in it, it comes from a variable. What is a variable? A variable is a characteristic that describe that subject or interest. For example, a person, a person is an entity, it's a subject. If a person is a subject, the person is made up of variables. Now, you are not made up of data, you've got data, but you are made up of variables because the variables describes the characteristics of you as a subject. Your um, color of your hair is a variable. The uh, entity you are, for example, the gender that you encompasses, the gender that you are is a variable. If you are married, we say the marital status is a variable. From those variables, we do get some units, and those units, that's what we call data. For example, the color of my hair, my variable color of my hair has data units, which are brown, uh, maybe blonde, red, black. Those are the colors of the hair of different subjects. Um, the type of vehicle is a variable. The data will be VW, or the, not the type, the mode, the, mo the make, or is it the make or the make of a, very, of a, of a car or the type. Let's, let's use the type, the, 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 the brand. The brand of a car will be VW, Toyota, Mercedes, and so on. Those units are called data. There are values associated with the variable. Hence, you always use variable and data interchangeably. And from there, we're going to learn about the types of variables because you need to understand the type of variables in order for you to be able 
to manipulate it in order for you to be able to summarize this you need to know what type of data you have or what type of variables you are working with so there are two types of variables there is what we call a qualitative variable or we call it also a categorical variable mean one and the same thing these are variables that you can put into categories like the color of my eye marital status those i can put them into categories because the data that comes from there i can group them into those different categories brown eyes purple eyes red eyes black eyes and so on we also have the other type of variable which is quantitative or what we call numerical variable and these are the variables that you can either count or you can measure if a variable can be counted we call it a discrete quantitative variable like the number of students i have in my class uh, the number of books the number of modules I'm studying, the defects per hour, so where you are counting how many defects you get from a factory, if you work in a factory and the bottle doesn't come out straight or the, the um, when you are making um, cups, some of the cups uh, do not have handles, those are defects, or they've got chips, those are defects. If you work in the factory, um, uh, I like going to those factories in Cape Town where uh, they sell the defects from Woolworths and all that. Um, and because you buy those, the defects are, are not visible in the naked eye, but in a factory where they sell, um, the service is to sell 100% guaranteed good service to their client, a small defect for them it's it's a defect so you go there and you buy those defects so those you can count how many defects you get in your in your factory in order for you to to fix the processes so i'm deviating from what we are discussing those that can be measured are now called continuous quantitative variables and those are the variables such as your height your weight your age age is measured you measure age age by the second you are born by time by day by month and so on those are the types of variables we also have what we call the levels of measurement and with levels of measurement they've got the ranks as well because there is the ones with the lowest and there are those with the highest uh, levels. The lowest levels are from the categorical variables, and those are nominal and ordinal. With nominal, there is no logical order, um, and the categories are said to be mutually exclusive because one category cannot you cannot belong into two, in two categories. Ordinal, so an example of that is female and male. You cannot belong in both. Ordinal consists of distinct categories which have an order. So there is a rank to this. For example, um, levels of education, preschool, primary, high school, college, university, those are levels that you can go through um, because one is higher than the other as you move with levels of education. And then we move into some of the strongest, which are the higher levels, which comes from quality, uh, sorry, quantitative variables, which is interval and ratio. And both of them, because they come from numerical measurements, they've got numerical measurements to them. With interval, there is no true value of zero. For example, think about it in this way, interval, when you think about interval, think about temperature. With a temperature, 
zero is just another number. It means it's another cold day. If it's negative one, negative 10, or it's 10, or it's five, or it's 14, or it's 22, that is interval. The ratio consists also, it's a numerical measurement, but it has a true meaning of zero. So zero means zero. Zero means you do not exist. Zero means there is nothing. The true meaning of zero exists. Like when you weigh yourself and it's zero kilogram, it means you don't exist. So it needs to be at least 20, 30, 40 kilograms. So any value that does not take a negative number it's a ratio if it takes a negative number think about it as interval i'm almost done so these are the levels of measurements nominal ordinal goes with categorical data the only thing you need to ask yourself is this numerical or is this categorical if it's categorical, ask yourself, does it has an order or does it not have an order? If it does not have an order, it's nominal. If it has order, it comes from the name ordinal, order, ordinal. So there is order. Interval, ratio. Interval, does it have a negative? Can it go to a negative value? Or can it go to positive value? Can it, can it only take zero and positive values? If it can go into the negative, it's interval. If it can go into only takes positive values, it's ratio. The other thing, just to conclude in terms of basic operations, remember order, they all can have, or they can be ordered. All right. Even if nominal does not have order here, we're talking about the um, basic operations. Can I sort the data? Yes, you can sort the data. Uh, it is, you can order the data. This is not meaning that is there an order of how the variables looks, but can I put them from lower to higher, the values when I have them? Can I count or Create frequencies, yes. Uh, males, how many, I can count how many males I have, how many females I have. Or I can count how many people responded with strongly agree as opposed to strongly disagree. I can count the, the how many people because it's frequency. Interval, I can count how many um, people are between the, uh, they have temperature or not people. How many days did we have a temperature below zero degrees? How many days did we have temperature above zero degrees? Things like that. Uh, ratio, I can count how many uh, people weigh this kilogram or above this kilogram or below this kilogram, things like that. The mode, we're going to also discuss this later on. What do they mean? What does the mode mean? Uh, the mode is the most appearing number. So in the ordinal, yes, you can. In interval and all sorts. Median uh, is the middle value. Uh, you can only calculate the median with in numerical values. The mean you can only do with the numerical values. Um, the, uh, the difference, can you add and subtract? Yes, you can do, add, add, you can add and subtract. Can you do a ratio? You cannot do a ratio of a negative number. So always remember that interval values will not have a ratio. Do they have an absolute value of zero? Remember that. Which one ratio will have an absolute value of zero? Whereas interval also can go into a negative, right? So I am done. Any questions? We are 20 minutes in. Do we have any questions? If there are, I'm gonna switch on to this side.
Any questions, ma'am? Okay. Then let's go. Then, in. let's say I do have a question. Yes. It's your nature. With all these discussion in the uh, the study guide of basic statistics, um, is that all now in unit one? Because yes. I struggle to mark where with all the different types of, yeah. You know, so it's all in level one. It's unit all one. in study unit. Yes, study unit one. Um, sometimes they are called scales of measurement or levels of measurement. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's look at how the questions comes from your assignment or your exam. So we're going to look at activities. So number one says complete the following sentence. Mm is a statistical method that draws conclusion about the mm based on the mm computed from the mm. So think about it. We've got two branches of statistics. We've got descriptive and we've got inferential statistic. So the first question there, or the first mm, should either be inferential or descriptive. So which one is which? Think about it. All of, most of them are in this the title themselves descriptive describes the data inferential infer the data or draws conclusion descriptive describes so they are in the description of what you need so mm is a statistical method that draws conclusion about mm based on mm computed from mm so the other thing also remember we introduced two concepts there is the population and there is the statistics and because we draw in what are the measures that comes from a population and what are the measures that comes from the sample so think about it there is the parameter and there is the statistic so based on that and based on what we've covered today which option a b c or d I would go for D. You'll go for D. D is incorrect because we're drawing conclusions. We're not summarizing. So the only correct statement will be C because it will say in Differential statistic is a statistical method that draws conclusion about the population based on this sum, uh, based on statistics computed from a sample. And that was the first few slides that we looked at. Okay, moving on to question two. Which one of the following statement is not the goal of a descriptive statistics? Which one? A, B, C, D, or E? Which one is not the goal? Remember, inferential statistic is about estimation and hypothesis. So which one is not? D. It will be D is the incorrect one because D 
SDG says estimating. We know descriptive statistics is about summarizing, uh, visualizing, displaying. It's also part of visualizing, reporting the numerical findings because we summarize the data by analyzing the numerical uh, finding, the mean, the standard deviation. Presenting is the same as displaying. Presenting of the data in a form of tables, chart, and summary statistics. It's all, all of them. They describe what descriptive statistics is all about. Question three. Which of the following variable is not a categorical variable? Think about it. Which one can you place in two categories? Is the height, gender, achievement score as low, high, and choice of whether test is true or false? Which one of this is not a categorical variable? Which one of these can we not put it to categories? C. Hmm? I would say C. Nope. Remember C, categories are low, average, and high. Mm. I should say I. This is categories. Also, this is categories. Mm -hmm. And gender can be put into male and female, which is categories Hi. and remember with gender as well with all the categories there is also a category where it says unknown or unclassified or prefer not to say those are other options you can have in your questionnaire when you create a questionnaire you don't have to restrict people to just uh, male and female you have other classifications that you can also create with that to say they can say not specified not um, um prefer not to say or you can either say unknown or prefer not to say or none or whatever you can add those other categories um but height height is numerical so catch Categorical is either one or the other. It's not like a definite. Uh, yes. So remember, anything that you can put into categories. Okay. I see that. Thanks. Right. And it doesn't have to be a dichotomous or two things. It cannot. It, it doesn't have to be yes or no, true or false. There can be other categories added, like for example. Um, I don't know, true or false, or I don't, and I don't know, can also be another category added to that. So, but the answer is A. Okay. For some reason, this thing puts everybody in the lobby. I might not be able to see everybody. Okay, so next question. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to st a statistic? Remember what is a statistic? Statistic. We have a big population that comes with the measures that are called parameter. We have a sample, which is a subset of a population which has the measures. So which one? A, B, C, D, or E. A statistic is a summary measure calculated from a sample. A statistic is an estimate of a parameter. We're looking for the incorrect one, right? A statistic represents the property of a population and not that of a sample. Mm -hmm. A sample mean is a statistic. It's a measure calculated from a sample, is it? A sample standard deviation is a statistic. Which one? A, B, C, D, or E? No. 
Sorry, sorry. Can Makochi Bam uh, mute her mic, please? Thank you. Okay, so number A is correct, number B is correct, number D is correct, and number E is correct because all of them describe what sample statistic or age statistic is because A, a statistic is a summary measure that comes from a sample. We also know from inferential statistic, we use statistic to estimate what the value of your parameter can be or your population parameter should be. A, a measure that comes from the sample is, for example, if we have to calculate the mean from the sample, it's called the sample mean. It's a statistic. Sample standard deviation, it's a statistic because it's also a measure that is calculated from the sample. So the only question here, which is not correct, or the only option or statement that is not correct is C, which says a statistic is a representative or represents a property of a population. We know that a statistic comes from a sample. We are halfway through all the questions. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So we're looking for the incorrect. So the statement that is mostly not correct. A population is a complete set of objects in the study, while a sample is a subset of a population. This is a description of a population and a sample. A population, remember, that's what we said. Population, Western Cape, all of them. A sample will be if I pick and choose 100 people from Western Cape and study them, and they will be a subset from the population. And once I got the results, I can fade them back to the population and say the population was this, this, this. So this is correct. A statistic is a property of a population, while a parameter is a property of a sample. We know that population, parameter, sample, statistic. So therefore, the incorrect one is B. When all the other statements, then they are correct. Data from a sample are in a form of a variable, which can either be numeric or categorical. Remember, we said there are two types of variables, numerical or categorical. Numerical are also called quantitative, categorical are called qualitative. Quantitative data are numeric and can either be discrete or continuous. We said that discrete, they means they can be counted. Continuous, it means they can be measured. Qualitative data are categorical data and they can use variables or labels to identify attributes. So labels like um, VW, Jeep, Cor um, Toyota, those are light labels that identifies attributes. Okay, question six. Which one of the following variables are not categorical? So this one is for you guys to tell me. A, B, C, or D. Can we put gender into categories? Yes. Name of internet um, internet provider like Telcom, Vumatel, Afrihost, all those. Yes. Yes. Height, can we put yes. it into categories? No. no. So height is the incorrect one. Marital status, whether you are married, single, widowed, 
can be placed into category classifying an object as defective or non-defective. There are two outcomes, two labels. Those can be yes. classified. Which one of the following statements is correct? I don't know why statements. Okay, which one is in which one is correct here? Now we're looking for the correct statement. So it means you need to read carefully each statement and eliminate those that are not correct. So gender, marital status, religion are example of qualitative ordinal variables. Ask yourself. What is an ordinal? Data that you can put into order, right? Or data that can not that you can put into a data that has an order or logical order. Does marital status have a logical order? No. Therefore, it means if I'm using only that, like let's take religion as well. Religion does not have any logical order. So that is not the correct statement we are looking for because the key word here is ordinal. They are all categorical, but are they ordinal? No. no. The amount of money a person spends in a shopping mall is a discrete variable. Ask yourself. Discrete variable. Amount of money, which means it's numerical. Discrete, it means I'm going to be measuring that. Now, what I didn't mention when I spoke about uh, measure, any value that can take also a decimal, it's measured. Right? So think about it. So now, discrete means counting. So if discrete is counting, amount of money. Then it's the true. statement is correct. No. Discrete is counting. And I told you anything uh, continuous, anything that can be measured, which is continuous, can also take a decimal point. Money. Money is, is it, can you count money or can you measure money? Can count money. Ah. <laughs> can you count money or measure money? Anything that can take a decimal point, it's measured, which means it is continuous. Money is money decimal. Because we, we measure money in terms of rent and cents, right? Yes, yes, there is a point. Therefore, there is a decimal. Therefore, money is continuous. Always remember that. Okay. Don't so, fall for that trap that so you are counting so money because when you take 100 rand and put it on the table and say one, two, three, you are counting. Ah, uh, Remember, with cents, we're measuring it. So to split is it a whole numbers then? Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, it also, it, yeah, probably we can put it that way. Anything that can only take whole number, it will be counted. Uh, I'm, I'm scared to say yes, and I'm scared to say no, but it, it whole number, yes, because it has to be a whole right yeah so this is also not correct the number of girls with blue eyes is discrete correct yeah because you're going to be counting them one yes. two three four five until you get to the number of until you finish counting all the number of girls with blue eyes so this is correct the position one finishes in a race is a discrete variable. No. 
Ah, I think with this with this question we have two incorrect we have two correct answers. Because when you finish in the race, you can either finish position one, position two, position three. Ah no, but you cannot add them, right? Yeah, exactly. But you cannot add them. The numbers represent labels which are categorical. Sorry. So that's, that's actually categorical. It is a categorical, so this is incorrect because the position is not a numerical value. Value. It's a categorical value that represents the position that you end up in in a race. Yes. The number of times, and I think our time is up, the number of times a mouse make a turn, a wrong turn in a laboratory represents a continuous variable. But that is the yeah. number. So number means you can count the number of wrong tents. You cannot measure them. No. So that is, so only C is incorrect. Okay, so I had three more questions. So you can also, um, I've shared the, the link to the, I'm, I'm gonna do the PDF and, and share where all the PDFs will go. I, I still don't have a place as yet. Um, I will share that. So this is another question that you can also look at on your own. Um, and that was the last one. And I think our time is up. So I've shared this on the WhatsApp group. If you are not on the WhatsApp group, um, after the session, we can discuss where you can, how you can be part of the WhatsApp group. Um, the on the pdf on the link that i shared you the links don't work but on the pdf the links will work um this is the schedule for this month everything up until the 24th of april probably should enable you to complete your assignment one i think your assignment one I'm not sure when it's due, uh, different module, different assignment. Otherwise, then I will see you on Saturday at 10 till 11. Remember to always to use the link to sign up to the classes so that you can have the dates available on your calendar and you are able to get reminders so that you don't forget. Um, I will also find an alternative solution for us to not to have to sign up to all the sessions and have one automated um, link that can generate the calendar for you for the rest of the sessions. But for now, this is the alternative I found. Remember to also, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, the link, you, um, I've shared it on the WhatsApp as well. I will also reshare it. Um, when you get to the YouTube channel, uh, we're going to go there. Uh, let me also just open it and then I can show you later on. Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't have to click on there. On the YouTube channel, there is a subscribe. So when you subscribe, you subscribe to the YouTube channel. You will receive notification of the videos you can look at the videos remember to like and share like and share and comment um there is a button somewhere on there that says join so when you join you you need to choose don't choose the first two the first two are just for those who support the content and just want to give something if you want to receive the videos because this is the only way I can make a revenue as well for the time that I spent with you. And remember, you only pay as little as 79 rand for the whole month because it's a month on month membership. So it's 80 rand for you to view the recordings, eight recordings, eight sessions for free that I'm giving you my time. So please make sure that you join and you join, not subscribe. 
also when you join, remember not those two, there is the 9, $9.99 and the $19.99. Those are just for those who support the channel and just want to give a little that they can. But if you want to have access to the recordings and the videos, you need to join either with the $79.99, $149.99 or $379 or $349 or something. I can't even remember now how much is that other one. It's up to you how much you want to um, support the channel so that I can also feel like I need to continue doing this so that more people can benefit from this. So, but it's up to you. Otherwise, the free sessions are also on there. If you go to playlist, look for the module STA 1610. You will find all the videos for all 1610 um sessions the previous sessions um you can get hold of me via my email info at pambilianalytics.co.za or you can get in touch with me via my whatsapp uh, only whatsapp if you call you won't get me from that number it's just only whatsapp you can also visit the website and you can go to the youtube channel there is the youtube channel Link um, is youtube.com slash at ELB data literacy, or you can go and find me personally, Elizabeth Lizzie Boy. It's one in the same um, YouTube channel. Thank you for coming, and I will see you on, on Sunday, on Saturday, sorry, Saturday. Are there any questions? Yeah, Lizzie, I'm gonna phone you, man, just to ask you to explain all these uh, financial options. What do they mean okay, and all of that? Okay, yes, I'm gonna.